mobile devices. We're going to start because we are short on time. We have two presentations today. Even though Juan Gabriel is still not here, he confirmed that he's on the way, and I hope uh, that is the case and that he'll get here on time. But uh, let's begin with our international speaker. And Maudi, I, we hope that Maudi, uh, Juan Gabriel will arrive. And if that's not the case, then we'll be able to benefit from having more time with Mauricio. And that'll be good both for him and uh, for the audience. So let me introduce, and it really is a pleasure for me to introduce Mauricio Jaimes. He's a great e expert with almost 20 years in the field of GPS and GIS. He is in charge of uh, uh, he's in charge of GIS systems for North America, Central America, and the Caribbean. Although he has many years of experience, he was working for Turnbull for many years. He's here from Colombia. He's a civil engineer uh, with uh, a master's in business administration from the combined program of the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University and the WHU Otto Weichheim School of Management in Valendar, Germany. He's taken many professional courses, and so his professional experience is also incredibly broad. So he's worked, he worked for many years for Trimble Navigation, for Latin America, Africa, and a certain region of the US. He also lived in Frankfurt, where he was the person uh, responsible for GIS for Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. So he has a very varied experience. And he has, he has been a lecturer at over 50 international events, uh, talking about GIS and GPS. So I'd like to give him the floor and remind him that, in principle, we have 20 minutes. But if the second speaker doesn't arrive, then we can lengthen that a little bit. So good afternoon to all of you. The presentation is 20 minutes long. But if the other speaker doesn't arrive, we can talk a little bit more about more details. I'd like, at the end, if you have questions, to talk about or the concept that I'm going to be presenting. The presentation is about the data capturing trends. And I'll begin by presenting the work, the traditional workflow, the Base for, basis for this when we're capturing data for GIS. And normally that doesn't vary, but what changes are the technologies. But the this workflow is constant. And then what I'll do afterwards is review each of the steps, which technologies are being used, and what are the trends over the last few years. So the first thing is that you capture the field, which uh, before, you used to do it with pen and paper. But today, we're talking about sophisticated equipment that can have an operating system like Windows and where you install different applications. And you do the input directly on the fee in the field. And normally, you combine this with other technologies. Of, uh, we can have um, satellite images and uh, flights, air flights. And so this generates the first base map. So that's the first stage. That hasn't really changed very much. It's the technologies that have changed. After that, we have quality control. This quality control, depending on the equipment that is being used and the software being used, you do it either in the field or in the office. Then we do processing. That processing, depending on the technology that we use, can be uh, very lengthy or very short, very detailed or not so detailed. It depends on the objective uh, and the final product. 
then we have a distribution, and that dist data distribution has also evolved uh, the way that in which we do it. If you remember, the first presentations that we had yesterday, we were all talking about data distribution. The speakers were talking about that. And how technology has evolved so that at the beginning, at first, you did it through an internal network, then servers, and now today we're talking about the cloud. So that distribution is another of the steps uh, in this uh, workflow. And then we have updating. Things change on a daily basis, so we have the need to update the information. It's possible that we have a very complete base map, and if we're an energy, electric energy company, we're going to be talking about power and light, and you have to uh, update the information because things change every day. So that's the following step then in the workflow. So let's talk in detail about each of these steps, but before we go into that, Let's see some of uh, general concepts, and I think that in uh, some of the presentations that you've been seeing, you've been seeing these trends, but I'm going to present them again. The first is concept is, or the general consideration, is the evolution that we have from desktop to servers and the cloud. This, uh, we already have this here. And the, this brings some complications and some clients, for instance, who are going to say, no, I'm, I'm not willing to put my data in the cloud and I have my restrictions and I won't do it for security reasons or for any other reason, any internal reason that they may have. And they still work with internal servers. But when we talk about the cloud, we can say, but the cloud there has two possibilities. One is to have a hybrid cloud or private cloud or a public uh, cloud. And I think the trend towards having the data on big servers and what's going to change is how this is implemented, whether you do it publicly or privately or if you have a sort of hybrid. And this hybrid uh, manner is probably to have the base maps in a uh, data server, but the critical information and the one that's for my work, I have it in a, on a private server so that I don't have any restrictions as far as security is concerned. Oh, this is very interesting. If you see or take a look at it, this is the way I see it, and this is a very personal opinion. We see the desktop as a candle, and the server is electricity. And today, we still use candles, don't we? And you'll see it, and that, that people still use candles. However, what we're expecting in the future is an evolution that's so radical that when you see in a few years you're saying you see someone working on a desktop, it's going to be so passe that this analogy will apply. So now let's talk about the workflow. So this is uh, the input in the field. If you see the axis, the, uh, the Y is the speed of capturing and the X is the time. And you see some of the technologies and how the data capturing or data collection um, take uh, has changed not so much in time but the volume of data. If you see at the end, probably some of the most drama dramatic is the using of GPS and mobile technologies. And that you can see in the last phase of mobile linking or link ups. And this is revolutionizing the data collection for geographic information system because of the volume of information that can be collected and the amount of details that one can have. Today we're talking about solutions both for mapping and engineering that can that can collect each point with a precision of less than one centimeter. Then in collecting data for GPS there's a precision in the in terms of is the y axis and x axis is the time and this is not a reflection of what our clients have said that they require as far as precision is concerned the top curve is for cadastro applications and aqueduct uh, services 
a public works and topography. Normally, we're talking, we were talking about in 2008, we were seeing precisions of 15 or 10 centimeters. Today, none of our clients will accept a solution that do, do, doesn't offer one centimeter of exactitude. And public utilities, for instance, like electricity and some other uh, public services like tra uh, transportation, the exactitude that the clients need around 30 centimeters. If you see the curb continues to grow, and what we expect that over the next few years, our clients will also be asking that we deliver uh, applications for these sorts of solutions that are to the nearest centimeter. And then the last one is for forestry which usually is less than one meter, and we don't expect our clients go are going to expect more precise data than that. So depending on the necessities or the needs of the client or the market needs, the various uh, manufacturers have solutions for each of these markets. Each circle represents uh, a solution, and I'm talking about, I'm going to be talking about Le Leica, and these are some of our solutions, and how we deliver these solutions to the different uh, markets, the size of the circles is simply the, t the size of the market as we see it. The trend is solutions that are more and more precise. And we say that precision is addictive and once you when you first do it, it might be 10 centimeters, and then the client says, no, we want 5 centimeters. And most of our clients are asking for exactitudes or precision of less than one topographical exactitude of less than one centimeter. The next evolution in data collection for GPS, this is a screenshot of a software solution that allows you to create without having to have a training as a developer. The workflows have been changing and clients say, well, Despite the fact that there is this workflow, this generic workflow, what I want in the field is an application that's specific for my needs. I want to be able to collect. Some clients say the only thing I want to have in the field is three buttons, and that one that says collect data, the other one says pause, and the other one says finish collecting or, or, or fill in a format or whatever. And that trend is super, is very clear. And we cannot, as a manufacturer, create a specific solution for each of the various workflows. So the way that we deliver this, these solutions to the clients is through software that enables the clients or distributors, distributors to create specific applications depending on their needs. So the generic field solutions uh, they really, they really depend on the software. Now, the evolution of LiDAR, the workflows, the 2D workflows, they're moving to 3D. And over the next few years, I think, I think there are some applications that already exist where you can walk outside and see the whole environment or panorama in three dimension, in three dimensions. So, what we're seeing is uh, the positions will no longer be represented in 2D, but rather in 3D, so that you can uh, create maps and not of a post, not just a light post, but to measure the, the height and see a three-dimensional object. So then we have the coordinate, coordinate systems per, by project. We're talking about common coordinate systems. And before, when we were talking about engineering, a project had its own coordinate system. And today, it's necessary that these coordinate systems be common and that they're developed by uh, institutions like INEGI. Then we have uh, data and inf engineering data and information. And before, they were stored in a CAD. But the CAD, in th the three-dimensional CAD, they've been in the market for many years. And they're a very good tool. I'm not talking, I'm not going to talk badly about the CAD, but what I'm saying is that the intelligence within a CAD is limited. The intelligence in a GIS is such that we can do analysis of d different types of analyses. 
And what we see with the evolution of LIDAR is that the information that you put into a GIS system is more intelligent, you can do more analyses, and therefore it, it's more applicable. It has more greater applicability. Another of the paradigms is uh, to carry out expensive autom automation. And of course, yes, technology has a cost. However, that's changing. And to not auto automate is what is turning out to be expensive. And if you do t total cost analyses or total cost of ownership for the various solutions, you'll see what I'm talking about. It simply is necessary to automate. It's necessary to have workflows that are connected and to work uh, with distributed inf data and information. And then we have data for a simple person. This is data mining. You can have the possibility of sharing information and getting information from different sources. Jack uh, Daniel the other day was talking about the other day of combining information from base maps. And we saw an example where information was brought in from different sources. This was yesterday morning. And we're aligned with the same concept. We're sure that just to have information from one source is limiting. Today, it's necessary to get information from various sources and to share that information with other entities. Uh, so this is a graph created by the Transportation Department of North Carolina. And what they did was an analyze the different, the various LIDAR platforms. What you see here uh, is this radar graph. And the more ex external to point zero, the greater the value. For instance, if we talk of applicability in red, this is the uh, ground LIDAR. And the applicability is of this LIDAR is greater than of the fixed LIDAR or the mobile LIDAR. We can see that the data collection and the productivity of the data collection is, the, is also greater. And what, what we manufacturers are doing is trying to concentrate on those areas where it's necessary to improve and where we can improve. And one of those areas is efficiency, post-process efficiency. I would ask you or invite you to analyze if you're interested in having LIDAR, mobile LIDAR solutions that you can see the different options for post-processing that are on the market and to not focus just on one solution. That's where the bottleneck forms and that exists in this sort of uh, technology. And you can see that clearly in this graph, in this chart. So we manufacturers are all trying to improve that. The next step, we already talked about uh, collecting in the field and what are the trends here. So now let's talk about quality control. As far as quality control is concerned, well, the control should be in the field as well as in the office. If we can input the data as finished as possible, I don't know if that's a correct word, but the most uh, that they be in the uh, most advanced state as possible, then that's ideal because then we don't have to m modify, edit, correct in, at the office. So the first uh, control in the field uh, for us is the most important, uh, uh, both whether you collect data via LIDAR or GPS, that you get the cleanest data so that you can deliver them um, as cleanly as possible, and that's one of the main objectives in this technology development. Here's another example that the information that's presented be useful. Here you can see that here's, we have combined information. The green lines that you see are information that comes from a scanner, and what you're seeing, it's, it's rotating and the vehicle is moving, and that's, what, that's why you see those lines. But that comes from a cloud of points. Now combine that information with images and the, for the two things to be in communication, well, that would be the ideal thing because that way you know exactly where there are differ differences in information and errors and you can correct the errors using the images. So that's another of the quality controls and we do this already in the office. The next thing is processing. And processing, if we're talking about GPS, well, the collection with GPS before it had uh, several steps, you know, the user at his office 
uh, would take data, creates a dictionary of data or a format or or variables that are going to they're they're going to go out into the field and they co copy that into the data collector that goes out into the field he collects the data then he goes back from comes back from the field transfer the information at the office and then to, to this to the post process software he does the post processing then con quality control and then he delivers all of the information to the GIS system and what we're talking about today is that if we have the possibility of accessing a database that already exists and we have the quality controls in the field, it's possible to avoid all of those office steps and simply in the field do the collection and the updating right away of the system. So that's the evolution in the processing when we collect data with GPS. If we collect uh, data with LIDAR, the a browsing, you do it through video. And the combination of the point, the cloud of points and the image enables you to process the information more quickly. As I was saying, we manufacturers are trying to create solutions that eliminate bottlenecks that exist in processing, especially uh, the li with LiDAR technology, which is relatively new. So we have to have solutions that offer the user the possibility of doing his extraction without having to have a specialized personnel nor to have to repeat the field work because the information was simply incomplete. So both the quality control, know that what you're, to, that you're collecting in the field is what I'm going to be needing to process and additionally, that what I'm going to be processing at the office, that it's complete and will enable me to extract information, both of a, a, a cloud of points and images without needing uh, very specialized users. The next step is distribution. Now, this is an example, just an example. This is a bit complex, but what you're seeing here is a solution and how the information is distributed. If you have a solution, in this case, this is uh, Airdes Apollo solution, and it can be on several servers. It can be on one or multiple servers. And the databases can also be on different servers. And the technology enables us today to extract or connect the information from different databases and, and components and mapping components from, with different characteristics so that we can update information in the field uh, in different ways. And this distribution, as I was saying, is, is currently the way of delivering information to different types of clients. And the last thing is updating. And updating can be by, via GPS or by, via LIDAR. And in the case of GPS, Typically, in order to update, it's more, it's easier to use GPS because the user simply is taking the information that has changed. So going back to that example of, of public services, if a transformer changed, well, the user goes out in the field and updates the corresponding information. And, and, and it gets updated in the server. But in LIDAR, because of the volume of information that's collected, then normally the routes are repeated two or three years. It's not that we're doing uh, these routes every day, going on these routes. And the volume of information, as I said, has so many applications that it's not necessary to repeat the work all of the time. So what you see is a three-dimensional panorama of everything that we saw along the route. Lastly, and with this I will conclude my presentation, these are a summary of some of the trends in data collection for GIS. We see that there is a change and there is a broad spectrum of workflows and that users want to have applications that are designed specifically for the purpose of data collection for their particular application. We have technical and non-technical users, and the trend is, is that to the degree that the volume of field work increases, 
that the volume of users also increases that not necessarily are technical users. So we have to consider applications that are easy to use. The next thing is the precision, the exactitude, you know, the mapping. That's, that concept has existed for many years, but it almost is inapplicable today because today the applications for, infor, for GIS they're calling for precision, uh, like the ones in topography. And the next thing are uh, business or enterprise databases. And to the degree that, uh, to the extent that technology enables you to connect, then you can access these databases from the field. And you can see the different uh, providers of GIS that they all uh, have solutions to be able to access the databases and map servers from the field. And that's uh, with that, I conclude my presentation. And I think uh, the other presenter did not arrive. So we have time. So should we go ahead with some questions and answers? There are some sheets that have been passing around for the questions, but if you would like to ask something now, please, it's the time, please put down your name. And no, we don't have questions. Well, then we will give our speaker a little token of appreciation and a warm round of applause. Thank you.